All right, Mike here, and you're watching Dr. Zeist. I've got my truck taken apart. This is Project Amigo. And no, this is not a wrap. This is Hexel fabric with the fiberglass 2000 resin. And then the clear coat on top of this is Cerakote MC160. Um, this is the way to do it. Uh, if you guys want to learn about laying up carbon, watch Street Bandito uh, in their 240Z build process. That is how I did this. Uh, however, oh, uh, this is still in progress. I've uh, got some prickly spots on here, and they will cut you good. This is pure carbon. Uh, there's a little bit of fine tuning I have to do. I need to put gold foil in here. Uh, there's the LS. Um, that intake tube has Cerakote MC5100 on it, and that stuff is awesome. I've also put it on my wheels. I'll get a video on that. Um, that's w well worth it, and I think uh, Cerakote uh, have underrated themselves on it. Also, if you've ever had an old 90s GM truck, I don't think you can do this with your bumper, can you? <laughs> uh, that weighs less than two pounds. Uh, I also did my own full carbon dash, so I no longer have that, that steel interior piece. Um, if you guys ever build a hot rod, um, don't hesitate to do a carbon dash and, and don't worry about being perfect with stuff that sucks to wrap with fabric. Face it, at the end of the day, the automotive manufacturer had visions for this truck that were not composite. So, uh, stuff like that's a compromise and we're just going to roll with it. Um... Another thing I got going on back here is a rear mount gas tank. And I uh, plated the frame. Note, do not weld a square plate to a frame like this. You can cause cracking here from all the weld heat. Uh, I'm doing this because I'm eventually going to make a new frame for this. And that'll be an Art Morrison phone call. But right now, I'm just going to send it. Um, back here, we have a Boyd's rear mount gas tank. If you want to do a Boyd's tank, I am all for it. This thing is awesome. However, if you're going to drive your car really hard, I would recommend a fuel safe setup. Um, because they're, well, safer and they're stronger. Um, these welds from uh, Boyd's Welding, Man, I wish I could do that. Um, if you bolt a tank like this to your frame, use one bolt on this side and use a thick rubber washer. And then on this side, use two. These frames are not very rigid. So the frame's going to tweak this way and that way. And if it does it for too long, it'll crack your tank. It'll make your tank leak. So this allows the, the tank to pivot forwards on the one rubber washer there. Safe for setup. Also, a thing I really love about uh, this Boyd's tank, and that's actually why I went with a Boyd's tank instead of a fuel safe, is that A, we have these really awesome fuel senders, the 0 to 90 ohm. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a 0 to, uh, this is a 30 to 240. The thing I like about these is you have the fuel pump hanging off of this assembly, and then uh, you have this inlet here. So if I really want, I can put a 55-gallon barrel of methanol in my bed with a fuel line going to this, and I can, I can keep this tank full and service the exterior tank whenever it becomes necessary, uh, and then fill this through the standard fill cap. And again, 
I wish uh, Boyd's would just weld this stub real low and use an ORB instead of this cap. Um, but eh, otherwise, look at those welds. I mean, Boyd's welding is awesome. Now, another little detail. I wish they would have taken that fitting and either turned it this way or that way. It's hitting my shock. I'd have probably turned it this way. That way I can loop the the hose like that. Because, hey, once I convert this thing to a three-link, I'll have the panard bar here. So it just makes sense to make a little loop. Otherwise, channel update. Thanks for watching, guys. When it warms up, I'll do more video. But right now it is 24 degrees in here, uh, and I'm cold. Thanks. Bye.